Impala. Impala. Yep. How you say it, Doug? Yep. I'm gonna be there Impala. in the Impala. Hold on, Bruce, come over here. Impala. Doug is a northerner, so he says it differently. So I'm just trying to learn to say it the right way. Impala or Impala? <laughs> yeah. Impala. Impala. <laughs> teach, teach Doug. Impala. <laughs> Gotta say it a little slow. A little slower. A little slow yeah. in the south. Yeah. Put a little, put a little Detroit lean in it. Yeah. Impala. <laughs> it's hard. It. <laughs> All right, guys. Just a quick update. Uh, last night we loaded the '64 Corvette chassis into the back of the shop truck, and uh, I brought it over here to Southwest Metal. And they're going to blast it. But I uh, just figured I'd show off some some of the last minute details of the work that uh, Keith and Zach did on here. Uh, Keith fabricated this nice little structural piece yesterday and Zach got it welded in. And everybody seems to be killing it lately on this project. So uh, it's gonna get blasted and uh, then it's gonna get sent to powder coating. And uh, oh yeah, check out the, uh, the safety flag that Bruce made. And of course, in, in typical Bruce fashion, he tied it by the middle finger. So I'm sure everybody had fun staring at that this morning in traffic. But anyways, just thought I'd give you guys a quick update. And next time you see this thing, it'll be uh, powder coated. Doug! Hey, Eric! What's up, dude? It's hump day. Oh, yeah? I don't have any butts to post on Instagram. Oh, <laughs> that's probably, <laughs> probably a good thing. Uh, how's it going? Pretty good. A little, eh, a little frustrating, but uh, we managed to. Uh, You're running into some bumps with the GTO here. Oh no! Just twist it up like a pretzel. We got the dash out of it this morning. That was my goal was to uh, get that out. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm all twisted up like this. <laughs> so that's out. I guess we got new dash parts. Take a little inventory of what we've got. So still just tearing it down. Yeah, I think we're at a stopping point now. Waiting on uh, maybe engine transmission and uh, ordering. The, is it getting swapped or what? That was my understanding. Was uh, I just haven't heard any of the plans for this car. So yeah, I heard that there was a new motor and a five-speed going in it, and a complete interior. So uh, and wiring. Here's here's the pile of dash parts. That's about the scoop here. That's it? That's it, I know. So I am wet sanding the Chevelle fenders because Zach is working on the Chevelle again, or he was yesterday, I don't know what he's doing today. But I finished the doors yesterday. I'm starting on the fenders. I have the other fender left. I think I have, I still gotta do the, the hood the deck lid's done and then I think that's it then after that I'm gonna be wet sanding um, some purple stuff for Barney the big purple dinosaur well so what did you think of how that came out a lot of people were complimenting your prep work came out good happy with it they said uh, Casey's paint wouldn't lay as flat if it wasn't for the work that you do. That's true. His work is only as good as my work. <laughs> he might not admit that, but... Oh, he's definitely not going to admit it. We all know. It's really me. And then I come in right after him and I uh, flatten out his clear and make him look even better. Like I'm doing now. Uh. Yeah, I'd, I'd say uh, it's a well-oiled machine around here the way everybody works in conjunction with each other. Yeah, I think we make a good team. We've lost many of people over time. But yeah, yeah, everybody's been asking where everyone's at. Well, Bruce is still here with us. I'm still here. I've been here since the beginning. And I'm, yeah. I might leave one day, I don't know. Still, Zach's, are Zach's you just waiting here. on a TV contract or what? Yeah, that or like a hair, hair deal. I don't think Casey's going to approve this video. <laughs> feel like a jealous girlfriend. <laughs> Had a couple of those in my day. <laughs> <laughs> 
What's your process on this? I start with 600, which is a really rough grit, but I think you got to start with 600 to get all the texture out and to actually get it to be as flat as you want to. We've tried it before with 800 and it didn't seem to get it as flat as we liked. So we moved down to 600 and it really made a difference. And then, so after that, I'll go 600 and I'll go 800. Um, it depends after that, you know, how happy I'm with, I am with it. I'll either go to 1,000 or 1,200, and then from there I'll jump up to 2,000, and then from 2,000 I'll go to 3,000 on the DA with the Trizac, and then after 3,000 I'll hit it with 5,000 on the DA, and by the time you get to 5,000, I've said before, you know, it's already starting to get its shine back, so it doesn't take long after that to buff it. It actually makes it really easy taking it all the way to 5,000, you're working a lot less to, to buff it back out. But if you don't start with like a 600 grit to, to really flatten your clear out, it'll still have like some, uh, some FLA in it. It's what we call the texture, also known as fat lady ass, cellulite, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, we, like I said, we've done it with 800 before and it always, you know, still left a little texture behind, not much, but it was enough to where, you know, we really didn't like the way it looked. So we started with 600 and tried that and I think that really gets rid of all the texture. And then if you're using guide coat too, like I am, it really helps you to get your scratches out. Because if you leave like a 600 grit scratch in there and you make it all the way to 5,000 and that 600 grit scratch is in there, it's not going to come out. Oh man. So the guide coat really helps. And I also change directions when I'm sanding too. Like I'll go all this way with one grit and then the next grit I'll change and I'll go this way. That way if I left a scratch behind, I'll see it because it's sticking out from all the other ones. That also helps. You know, because sometimes the guide coat will come off, but that scratch will still be there and you'll see it in a different direction. I think that's about it as far as what I do when I wet sand. It's just changing the direction with each grit, using guide coat, and starting with 600 to really get your clear flat. And you got to have enough clear on there to start with 600. You can't have like two coats of clear and think you're gonna sand it with 600 and make it all the way to 5,000 and you're gonna be sanding your uh, your primer by then or something, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we usually put about four or five coats of clear. Yeah, it's pretty thick. I forgot what, we did that video with Daniel from BASF and he was talking about mill thickness. Yeah. And I forgot what it was, but it was really thick. Yeah, I guess. compared to like uh, collision repair. <laughs> yeah, you know? collision pr repair is typically like two coats, and you're not really, you know, blocking it down like we are and getting it flat. You're just like denibbing it or trying to get your texture to mac match the factory texture, and we're not doing that. We want it as flat as possible. We want it to look like a mirror. So you got to have enough clear on there to do that, and the four four or five coats really helps. I and mean, it seems like a lot, but by the time you sand it down with all those grits, it's not really four or five coats anymore. It's probably two, maybe one, I don't know. Yeah, you end up yeah. taking a lot of that material yeah, off. Yeah, you take a lot of it off, especially with 600 when you're starting with that. I mean, it cuts through it really easy, which I like, because that's probably the hardest part is the, uh, the 600 when you're getting the texture out of there, but it really cuts through it pretty fast. What's going on? What are you working on? Making a bulkhead fitting for my bulkhead fittings. <laughs> now I'm putting the, the customer wants quick disconnects on the Chevelle. So he's running the Holly EFI, the multi-port EFI on it. Mm -hmm. So there's like 54 wires that I got to split and put through those, but he wants it a quick disconnect so he can just pull the whole motor and everything out. So I'm making it in a, I don't know, another bracket to it so I can just bolt the whole thing to the firewall instead of 
trying to bolt just those and drill nice holes to a firewall that has a motor in it and everything already. But I'm back on the Chevelle now for a little while. I'm having focus issues here. I am too. It's, it's, I think it's the weather. <laughs> Are you having focus issues too? No, because he can't even focus on that yet. Well, Here you go, focus on this. It's focusing just fine on that. Oh. <laughs> but they they really nice uh, once you get them clocked right. Now it's one. It has A through W on the small wires and one through four of the bigger wires. You're gonna have to take the that microphone over there to him. So, no, no. so he. Yeah, there you go. There you go. No, don't, don't, don't back out now. After days of prowling through the internet, looking at this fuzzy microphone, it looks, looks like a little face. awkward. It looks like I'm staring at the back hey, side just, of a just raccoon. Hey, just think. Just think of what Eric does with that when he's not at work. <laughs> so, anyways, we days of finding. But uh, anyways, those come from Fab Nine. Um, I believe they're. Uh, big into like Miatas, Japanese cars, but they're pretty slick. The reason why we picked those, the car has two bulk or two quick disconnect or connectors and in excess of 28 pins a piece, 49 I think total. And those will do 28 like 14 gauge wires and four 12 gauge wires. So those will be just for the fuel management system. I'm gonna make you talk about that again here in a second when I wire you out. I think anyway. I think at the I think at the end of this week I'm gonna go ahead and order yeah, another focus. one of those. So that way when both y'all are working in here or if there's two people working in here, I can just keep filming and not have to keep going back and forth, talk yeah. to each other. It's getting there. So I saw you got a new piece for the Falcon. Yeah, the front. Grill, bumper, filler, valance thingamajigger bobber you gotta do the uh the it's getting there you were working on some of the uh, i saw you were working on the door gap yesterday yeah the two since the door is off of a different car mm -hmm. then the fender no matter how i aligned it you want to use your hands to show the people the door action no matter how I lined it right there, mm -hmm. it would rub. So I just made the gaps match now. Oh, look at that. So. Very nice. Now, now it don't rub. Tested, Zach approved. There you go. So it still needs to be gapped all the way around, but the cars, all, all the panels are where they're gonna be after paint, so. Except for the hood, that's closed. It's just on the blower right now. Oh yeah, I forgot. So to. I gotta figure I gotta, out. I gotta show everybody that. That's yeah, I gotta figure out. I'll let Keith use his Vanna White hands. Oh. Got the blower back on. We need to do like one of them teardrop hoods. <laughs> you're gonna ha you're gonna have everybody all pissed off. Don't put that hood on there. The customer I've uh, sometime back discussed uh, a few different <laughs> options. Uh, anything from cow hoods to whatever. And he's all right with a cow hood, but uh, we found one, Ford used to do one on a, like a Fairlane 500. And if it's big enough, I think it would be more period correct to the car. And it's, I think it just, yeah, I don't know. Not a cow hood. So I mean, what's that like? Two inches you got to make up for there? Probably. And it's hitting right on the uh, re the hood reinforcement. So actually, if this was MIA and this dip here wasn't uh -huh. there, it would fit under the hood. So we could just take the body line out of it. Put a newer style peak in it. Flip it upside down. 
<laughs> oh, and uh, Thunderbird seats. Oh, yeah. They're a little bit wider than the Mustang seats. A little rough around the edges, but. You should have seen the car that they pulled them out of. Oh, yeah, you were there for that, weren't you? Yeah. I was the one that had to go scout them out. It, my, my job was pretty easy because. There was only one car left with the original seats in them, so they had about 15-ish nah. sitting out there. None of them had seats. Everybody had already taken all the seats out, so. So. No, I was going to say uh, everybody really wanted to know about this thing right here. The wagon. That is uh, for a very good friend of mine. Uh, he and I have been playing with it. Uh, it's for his granddaughter's first birthday, which will be here on, I believe, October 5th, so we're running a little out of time. But uh, it's pretty pretty much mocked up. Uh, steering linkage. So you did all the framework to it? Yeah. Uh, and then you blasted it because it was all yeah, crusty, was all rusty blasted. red, typical radio flyer. Yep. Bruce uh, primed it for us yesterday. The day before yesterday? Yesterday. So, uh, it even comes with uh, big red holders. So, anyways, uh, it just worked out. Casey's painting the Challenger, and just so happens to be that's the customer's, or my friend's customer's choice of color for the wagon so it'll be plum crazy purple that'll be cool possibly with some metal flag in it uh talked to tanner yesterday uh, if i can get it to him he's gonna pinstrap it up for us so it ought to be pretty radical Heck for yeah. a wagon well we'll have to keep everyone updated see if people were digging the project so pretty cool and you've already filmed the vet frame gone yeah i filmed that this morning with myself so uh she's uh Tired. <laughs> Tired of grinding on that one for a while, but. Uh, so are you on to the. I'll back onto the bins. The only one that's here left? Yep. Uh, we're getting the, uh, the A pillar, B pillars, as previously mentioned, are cast aluminum. Uh, they originally bolted to the car, frame, whatever, unibody and uh, they will bolt to this one so that's what we're making now is uh, start to make a little templates to uh, start making little stands for the frame so we can bolt the pillars back to the car um, there's no really other way to attach them so anyways it'll be welded the back welded in the front bolted in the middle once we can do that then we take all the x bracing out Start. Really? But you can't tell anybody what it is. Okay. Is he going to get it? No, they're delivering it. Oh. So the motor will be here today. We're gonna we're gonna piss off a lot of people. Um transmission I think is on order. I don't Were we doing automatic or standard in this? Standard? So it'll come from American Powertrain, I'm like ninety nine percent sure. Um, cool part about their stuff, you can. Uh, we did the same thing with the the vet and Casey's other, the Frankenstein or whatever. And who else did we do? I'm forgetting now. Anyways, you can buy uh, transmissions or whatever, trim it five speeds, six speeds. You'll send it with uh, the appropriate bell housing, clutch, um, hydraulics, whatever just kind of as a complete package deal so you're not running around all the place trying to find the the wee bitty pieces to make everything work so she's a roller heard yesterday it's going to be a hard top oh really there's always going to be a convertible but uh removable hard top, removable hard top sorry so uh we're uh shooting for a it <coughs> Wouldn't be correct for this particular year, 
they had small windows, but they found a couple big windows. Uh, one of them here, local, well, sort of local, Houston area. That uh, and the big window looks cooler. So removable hard top because the uh, 335, 3019 in the back. That's why tire takes up all the space for the uh, hinge action of the uh, convertible. I'd sacrifice the roof for a 335, I guess. But that's all, folks. You drip and fall? What are you doing over there, Doug? He's trying to make a life alert commercial. I've fallen and I can't get up. He almost did a barrel roll over that.